blah, 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 blah. Okay, quick recap of Boruto. So, uh, last episode that we have uh, didn't cover so far. Sumer comes back. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> After that, Denki and Wabe learned that they're better together than apart. Yes, shipped. Next episode. <laughs> Sarda, running. Still no dad. Next episode. <laughs> no daddy. <laughs> so, now we've caught up. Now we're caught up, yeah. Now we're caught up. Uh-huh. Now, yeah. Now, we are talking about just a little short excerpt of the Uzumaki family. Just kind of a day in the life in a sense, mm-hmm. as normal as Naruto, the, yeah, and as, as, as normal as a Hyuga slash Uzumaki family. Normal as, as an Uzumaki family can be. Yeah, that's true. I'm pretty sure, like, Hinata would never have this kind of experience if, like, married into another family. But, um, what would, what would you say is, like, the, your highlight of that episode? Of, uh... That latest episode. Yeah, okay. Of the latest episode, I would think that... I don't know what song that was. That, was that, that sounded think. like Game Grumps intro. <laughs> Alright. Um, <laughs> I would think that my highlight was definitely the eating contest between Chocho and Choji. Hmm. I mean, like, it's nice to have that little flashback of, like, Hokage... To be Hokage Naruto. Mm-hmm. And the whole, like, thing that just happened, like, right before that, or during. Uh, but I would say... Hmm. There was something... Something I did like about when Naruto and uh, Borto were right outside, and Naruto, like, heard uh, Borto's stomach growling. Yeah. And instead of just going straight to work, he just said, you want to go get something to eat together? Mm-hmm. And there was a slight hesitation. And you just see, like, Naruto's face just kind of, like, go down a little bit like you don't want to and that's when like you you kind of see how Naruto still cares despite how busy it is yeah so I, I actually did like that I would say that's a kind of a highlight for me and then of course Boruto doesn't understand but well, that's that's what he's been contracted for yeah. <laughs> he can't be caring until after the movie which now we are starting to transition not to the movie per se, but Gaiden. Yeah. So that's going to be really interesting. Next episode's the start of Gaiden. Yeah. I, I was kind of thrown off because uh, thrown off because I still saw Sarda like, in her old, the old anime attire. I was like, so wait, wait. So when is she going to wear pants? <laughs> she doesn't. Damn, dude. But um, I guess like we can also talk about like uh, things that we liked in the previous episodes. Mm-hmm. I did like how Sumire did return... Although she's now a very minor character, she, you don't har- you hardly ever see her now. The last time we saw her was like in the Sarda episode, where she was just observing everyone like walking on water mm-hmm. or trying to maintain balance on the water. Anyway, well, you don't believe that they could walk on it? They were trying to, trying so. Hard. You see Sarda at the end of that episode, just like trying to stay. But I mean, that's da, running water, da, but da, still. Da, 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 da. I can't find the picture. <laughs> what are we looking for? I'm trying to find the picture. Like, Sarda, please put pants back on. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Not Would finding you... it anywhere. Uh, it's okay. We get it. It's understandable. I'm mainly finding a lot of Sarda cosplay and, and big booty bitches in uh, yoga pants. Okay. As long as it's pants, Sarda, I'm okay. Right? <laughs> Showing a lot of leg there, young lady. Jesus, this this generation, <laughs> they don't know. They missed out. <laughs> Sarda? What would you say, like, out of the episodes we just recapped, which one was not a big one in your, like, list? Uh, so, kind of, like, my least favorite of them? I guess so, yeah. Um, hmm. I think of the episodes that we watched, um, my least favorite of them would be I think a new path a new path yeah. where like Sumire is the uh, I guess the focus and also not so god that's so weird and distracting <laughs> look at that uh, I'm sorry I shouldn't really say much because no one can see that <laughs> nor, nor should they but I would say my least favorite, I feel, as far as, like, the impact of the series would actually kind of be Sarda's. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't really have much, like, plot progression in that sense. It's more like 
this is this is a spotlight for this character, but I think it'll really pick up in the next episode. I'd say that's the one that should have been there. Um, what I got out of it was wasn't so much like oh we're advancing the plot or whatever, but it's kind of showing the training that they're doing and like oh now they know how to walk on water. I guess so. I guess it may be like what the previews has told us. It was just a lot more focus on like well showing everybody, but also a highlight was what what's going on with Star Z. Like who is he? Mm-hmm. I was like I don't remember. <laughs> Whereas that episode is like like what would you like me to get you something, Sarda? That would be nice. <laughs> she did say that. <laughs> She's cold. Oh, sorry, I don't say that. <laughs> I would like one too. She's like, I'm right though, right? <laughs> I can't be wrong on this, mother. I think another thing I I actually did like about um that Sarda episode was the whole reminiscing of Sasuke and Sakura, Sakura's like first date and it only lasted like four minutes. <laughs> yeah. No, it was... I think it was 12. No, nah, it's gotta be shorter than that. It, it sounds so insignificant mm-hmm. of like a t- like a, an actual date. Speaking of which, I've... This is just like me personally, but I would like to see that like moment where Sasuke returns to the village and acts more like a husband or a slash father. Because that's just the side you'll never see of him like throughout the series for as long as we live. <laughs> just see him as a loving individual. An actual person. You mean you want him to have a personality? Gross. Yeah. Edge lords don't have personality. They just have edge. Yeah. Um, I would say maybe my highlight then for the series that we just covered. Um, nah, it probably wouldn't be Denki and Iwabe. Although that was a kind of nice one. It was nice, but it it is something to kind of. It was just kind of like, yeah. I think, oh, that's tough. I think it would be a tie between New Path and um, the Uzumaki family. Just like having that, like building more of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Although I feel like it might contradict, like with Borto being as bratty bratty as he is, like throughout until the movie or end the movie, I should say. I would say I think. Why I pick pick the new path was just like it's a nice wrap up for Sumire's arc mm-hmm. because like they started with that they should end it so how do we end it? Just I'm just like uh, I think that episode's kind of a letdown because it's it's really saying yeah anyone who possibly shipped this it's not gonna happen she's not important anymore we're never gonna show her again. Oh, we're talking about the shipping. I was just like talking about like her as it just. Just her. Well, yeah, just her, her, but her whole character was she's kind of Boruto's Hinata. I guess so. Which I, does kind of, like, eliminate her, her like, character appeal. Because, it's like, oh, she's just a clone. But at the same time, it's nice It's nice to have that. Yeah, that's true. I, I actually agree with that. Although, yeah, it's weird. Because I don't think Sumer ever, like, liked Boruto like that. And even, like... There might have been something. I think upon she the kind reunion. of. I think she liked him like that, but she was kind of not going to do anything with it, seeing as how she's just going to kill everyone and everything. That's true. Because <laughs> it's definitely her relationship with him that changed her mind on everything. That's true, and there wasn't any kind of significance in the manga that would detail and detail her any more. So, so in a sense, she is a filler character, if you, if one could say. And that is a pretty disappointing thing to think about. Um, I do think because Sarda does like like Boruto, like in the movie, I don't know when she develops that, but that just seems to be like the, I guess, the OTP or premature OTP mm. for them. Although I do feel bad about Sumire because there was character behind her, but now they kind of patched it up and now they've essentially just shelved her and she's now a very minor character shelter very much like your gravity over there yes i'm not gonna bring it out this is not this is not the time it's always the time to bring out your waifu justin she's not my waifu then why do you have figurines of her because she was in a convention exclusive uh-huh, uh-huh sure <laughs> she's got the mask <laughs> anyway what else is there to talk about then um 
I don't know. We're kind of in between arcs right now, so... It's like a transitional period, huh? Yeah. Then there's not really much to cover. Um, Even with the arc coming up, which is Gaiden, I don't think we're going to have a lot to talk about, considering... We've already seen it, or... Yeah, we already know the whole thing. That's true. Hmm, I guess, like, we'd have to really, like, analyze, like, certain things, and just, like, go in depth with, like, the individual characters. Like, how we kind of did right now with Sumire. You know, like, she is... At the end of the day, she is a character that just got shelved, but in like in my opinion, I feel like she needs to have more of an appearance or an audience at some point, like later on. Mm-hmm. Even though the uh, series is most definitely not complete, and I have no idea like where they are, considering that they don't have Sumire right now in there, so I'm not entirely sure how they're gonna go about things. <sighs> Well, that's pretty much my take so far on like this series as we kind of caught up. Um, after the ghost incident stuff, everything started to like pan out and started to... dying down and going back to normal. It's like, oh, and for a while, nothing happened. Yeah, it's kind of sad when you think about it. But then, I guess like when you think about it, with like the whole Naruto like manga, it's... Or not manga, but the anime. It kind of did the same thing too where it just kind of like went into filler mode. And Shippuden is also a victim of that as well. The thing I like about um about animes over manga is mangas kind of feel like something always has to be happening. Uh, like it's kind of almost a synopsis when you compare it every single like source material. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, yeah, it's the true story, but stuff has to happen in between. It feels like they go from one problem to another. Right. What about the days when there is no problem? Well, what happens then? Yeah. That where, is, where do they get their groceries? <laughs> where do they get their groceries? Where do they sleep? <laughs> where do where does all the uh, shipping go? And we, we actually saw that at the end of Shippuden. After Shippuden even. It's like, oh finally, we finally find out how Shikamaru and Tamar get together somewhat. <laughs> or, you know, and... You know, in uh, Sai, that that's kind of weird too. But <laughs> I feel like Chody's the only normal one. That and Inata and Naruto. As far as like the relationship development. It's, it's just, just like, oh, hey, let's go out sometime. Sure. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. And it's like, I'm really starting to like you. I'm really starting to like you too. Yeah. Have my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Versus like, I don't like him. He beat me in tuning exams. He's always so stuck up. He's so annoying. I want to have a baby with him. <laughs> I'll show him. I'm going to fuck him and have a child. <laughs> then I'm the winner. I'll win. Uh, <laughs> but also, you know, you know what? Uh, just based on the movie, Naruto and Hinata's like, romance was kind of weird too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He just kind of out of the blue started liking her. Yeah, just when he actually thought about it. He's like, huh. Huh. Do I? Do I? And the realization that like his love for Sakura was not really real in the sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I do like her. I guess so. It's not like I love you or anything. Like, what did you say? I didn't say anything. Baka <laughs> just runs away. But um, yeah, uh, I did well, actually. Since you brought it up, I did like to talk about that idea of like. Is filler necessary or not? And I think, like, from my stance of it, it's not necessarily necessary, but it does flesh out flesh out more of the series as a whole to have that. So it doesn't feel like... So it doesn't feel like something you just kind of, like, ingest and you're done with it. It's more like something that just kind of sits there for yeah. a while. But, uh... Oh, yeah, um... I'm trying to remember. There was a there was a word for Borto's new eye. That I think the writer confirmed it now that the ghost arc was done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. Yeah, you can go ahead and look I'm it up too. That's what the glory of the internet is for. So it's not the ten Saigon. It's something a little bit shorter pronounced. So it's um, you guys get to hear a lot of clicking, clacking. It's, it's uh, what's it called? Um, the Medal of Honor gameplay. Yeah. So, I think... Uh, the Jogon. The Jogon? Oh, shit. Oh, Literally shit. meaning pure eye. 
Yikes. Ah, no! Whoa, whoa, no! <laughs> no, shut up! <laughs> Process my ass. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I do like... I guess, like, overall, I do like filler to be there. Not to, like, be there for, like, a hundred episodes like Naruto just did. But... Uh, you don't like that? I mean, like, I, I like a good 20 episodes of filler, sure. But a hundred of that? When, at the end of the day, it was, Hey, Naruto, let's go training for two years. Okay. <laughs> and that's that's basically what happened after mm -hmm. Sasuke's retrieval arc. Or, not successful retrieval arc. Yeah. But after that, they just kind of panned out for a hundred episodes. Almost a hundred episodes. Um, I think my favorite filler arc was, um, God. I said before what my favorite filler arc is, but that's kind of like super filler. Um, I think just like a standard filler arc is leading up to Naruto wanting to chase after Sasuke at the Five Kage Summit, I think. After Pain destroyed the village and all that. Uh, yeah. I felt like that was a good... Or, yeah, is that more like, um... It's where everyone's kind of, like, telling their stories yeah. as they're rebuilding the village and... That's much better, that. yeah. Yeah, totally. I like that one, because it's like... Makes sense. Yeah, what does everyone do? Yeah. The village is, just isn't built. <laughs> That's true. I did like, to an extent, um... The Infinite Tsukiyomi arc. Or, well, not arc, but just, like, what happened, like, during that. Yeah. Everyone's, like, dreams, their world... <laughs> Because that was something I definitely thought about. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone's going to live happily ever after inside these cocoons until they're sapped of all their chakras. So what happens in them? And then all of a sudden you get this... And this is the exception. And then there was this, like, one arc that was... I believe I believe it belonged to Tsunade. Mm -hmm. It was retelling everything, but it was, like, ad-libbed or... Just, um... Like, kind of like a reboot of sorts of how things could have happened. Yeah, if Dan didn't die. Was it Dan didn't die? Oh. Yeah. He didn't die. Dan didn't die, and so, like, literally everything changed to where even, um... Even how things, like, panned out at the very beginning, like, mm -hmm. Sasuke never, like, left the village at that point, or... I think it's... Isn't that the same arc where, well, the same dream that, um, the fourth was still alive? Yes. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's the one. If Dan didn't die, everyone else would have lived. Like, can you... Everyone's like, oh, Naruto's the character. <laughs> no, it's Dan. Dan is the man. Dan's the real character. Dan the man. If he hadn't died, everyone else would have lived. Pain would have lived happily ever after in his rainy cloud city. Yeah. I think I think there was a good point that they brought up in that like alternative story was that despite there being such a change... Mm -hmm. uh, the timeline still tried to stick to what it was going to. So Sasuke did eventually attempt to leave the village. But that was after he had joined the police force. That was true. Like, he was already, what? Uh, was He wasn't a Joni. He was a Chunin, I think. I think so, yeah. But I think it kind of goes back to, like, the roots of, like, Naruto and Sasuke's um, heritage. How there seems to be a destiny between, like, these two clashing, like, people. Mm -hmm. Um from clans to siblings and how that kind of still stay true to even this like alternative timeline to where it's like you know like even though Orochimaru wasn't quite there yet he still wasn't influenced or rather I think Sasuke was still like influenced to gain more power thus went to Orochimaru still mm -hmm. even though he's been like he still has like a high standing position in the police force so, I, that's why I got out of it. So, I drew that part of it. It just, I felt like it panned out a little bit for too long. Yeah. Um, but, um, um, another one I liked was, um, who's her name? Tenten's. Yeah, Tenten was a really nice one, actually. That one was, like, it. super alternate universe. Yeah, super, yeah. Where they even, like, kind of keyed into, uh, what the, that one movie was. The, the original, what could have been, like, the Naruto thing. Thing. Well, actually, you know, it was um, it was kind of like a what if Tsukiyomi like kind of dream, where Naruto and Sasuke and, and Sakura are like, are from the same universe, but they jump into a different like alternative timeline, 
that uh, Oito sends them to, and everyone's completely different. Mm -hmm. And that was like its own movie. But um, the person who was like hijacking like Naruto's um, identity was uh, Memna or Memma or something like Minna? that. Memma. Midna. Oh. I'm gonna say Memma. Go with Midna. <laughs> I think no. I think it's Memna. Memna. Sure. Yeah, Midna. And so, yeah, they, they kind of, like, adopted that name for that character for that 1010 arc. And that was actually a pretty soul-crushing, like, episode for 1010 at the very end. Where, like, she knows she's, like, she doesn't belong. So, but she still needs to fight because everything's so familiar with her. Until she finally gives in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm home. And then, like, everything just zoom pans out to the fact that she just gave in at the end. Yeah. And I was, yeah. To think, if she hadn't give, if she didn't give in and kind of held true to herself, maybe she would have brought. In, she could have, maybe she would have broke out. Maybe she wouldn't have, but it's, it's nice to think. That's why I like the thing too, especially when um, Kishimoto, he's the writer, right? Yeah, so he like was. She's yeah. the most powerful ninja. Yeah, she has the most potential. Yeah, but yeah, now we don't really have Kishimoto like in charge of the stories anymore. It's like his um. Actually, like, it was, what's, his, it was like it was what his second in charge? Yeah, second in charge, his assistant. Um, I actually heard some stories about how they weren't really aware that it was going to be a sequel mm -hmm. initially. Like, like, like the the guy accepted the idea of having like a Borto or like a new series for Naruto, but he had no idea it was a sequel. So that's just kind of kept going. So the whole thing with like Borto and the manga might have been kind of like a last minute thing that kind of came up and they just kind of went with it anyway. So I'm kind of interested in how that might affect the anime as well. But it looks mm -hmm. like they're handling it pretty well for now. Um, I don't know. I think it, I think that wasn't like entirely meant to happen. Like at the end of the manga, it's like oh, and here's how everything flew fleshed out here's mm -hmm. here's the final bit that you would care to know it's like oh well did they get together who got with them who's this what happened there it's like okay Naruto gets with Hinata they have two kids Sasuke gets with uh uh wait Sasuke, Sakura Sakura me Sara <laughs> yeah Eno and you know, and Sire together. Choji gets a bitch from the rain rock cloud yeah. village. The place, the place with uh, Killer B. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, um, Shikamaru gets with uh, uh, Tamari yeah, and, and makes um. Oh my god, she could die! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and Lee has a kid too. But who's the mom? We don't know. You don't know either. <laughs> they they work out a lot. Ten ten sells weapons. That's what everyone's life is like now. Okay, bye. <laughs> I guess so. I think I think like series like that that just kind of like <laughs> does a time post skip. note. Boruto's a little shit. <laughs> <laughs> Truly though, I think that's I think that's okay for an ending where they just kind of skip forward to like the things that people might be guessing about. Otherwise, you could just end it in like an so after Potter the did. Yeah, that's what they did. And and worked out just fine. It's like, okay, 19 years later, this happened. Yeah, essentially. And that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say for my bit. Uh, should we uh, close it for now? Yeah. Alrighty. So next episode, um, this going to be the start of Gaiden. And it'll be interesting how they kind of adapt that into anime. I think the uh, manga did pretty fine well. So, so yeah. Uh, we'll just end it here. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Hashtag bye. Thank you. I couldn't. I